Still distinctly British, the Falkland Islands are the home of our skipper, irrepressible Frenchman and renowned Antarctic explorer, Jérôme Poncet. Like those famous captains who explored these waters in an earlier age, he is known both by his own name and by the name of his ship, and all who ply these waters know the far-roaming schooner, the Golden Fleece. The date is October 26th. Sir Ernest Shackleton also set sail on this day in 1914, bound as we are for the Isle of South Georgia, and his first stop on what would become a two-year struggle for survival on the ice of the Antarctic. Our navigation of the Scotia Sea will be across some 900 miles of open and unpredictable water. Our route steering just north of those notorious latitudes known as the Roaring Forties. These seas are known to be rough, a fact that's on the minds of our crew as we leave the sheltered waters of Port Stanley. Looking at porpoises playing off the bow. <laughs> Kinda nice. Yeah, we're probably gonna lose them in a few minutes because once we hit the open sea, they're gonna turn around. They're smarter than that. <laughs> Instead, we're going to go out there and get rocked all over the place. We're still just barely leaving Stanley over here. We're just getting underway. It's such a good feeling. I can't believe, man. I can't believe we're heading to South Georgia. These are the finest mountain athletes in the world, but 900 miles of open water makes us all extremely nervous. The Isle of South Georgia is the end of the earth. Too distant to reach by helicopter, no terrain on which to land a plane, a thousand miles of the planet's most notorious seas standing on all sides like an unfordable moat. The island has been touched by only a few seafaring expeditions. The whir and hum and thump of the engine is a constant reminder of our progress across the vastness of the Scotia Sea. With no land to offer reference, we focus on the rise and fall of flat horizons and rely on technology to report on our progress. We've done almost 200 nautical away from uh, the Falkland Islands, so we're about a quarter of the way. Uh, the boat seems quite small in these large seas. We're getting tossed around quite a bit. Most of us can't wait to get on land. We're, uh, we're mostly skiers and snowboarders, so uh, the sea is a foreign place for all of us. So, And it's quite humbling. And definitely there's some excitement in the air getting to uh, the island and getting on land. So hopefully we'll be there uh, within four days. The Golden Fleece is a tiny speck on a featureless horizon, but Jerome discovers that we are not alone on the Scotia Sea. The blip on the radar is unmistakable. There's something out there, and it's far bigger than we are. It's a, it's a big one, huh? to see our first real iceberg on our way to South Georgia Island. Oh yeah. That thing is huge. It's like the size of Hawaii. <laughs> the sea breaks against the iceberg like waves crashing at the foot of a cliff. We scramble to load cameras and snap pictures as though this might be the one and only iceberg we see on the whole trip. Our enthusiasm may be forgiven when it's considered that this is the first change to a flat horizon in nearly four days. About another 200 miles to go to South Georgia, and uh, sailing about 10 knots, so we're making some time. I don't even feel seasick anymore. 